Hello, my name is Evan Rogerson, also known as Nine Mutter Gang, and today I'm going to be breaking down my notebook from when I was on 67101C last year. So this notebook won the Innovate Award at Worlds, back when Innovate was essentially second place design award, and it also won the Excellence Award at the state championship. I kind of wanted to show off a successful notebook, how it was done, and then also point out the flaws so that you guys don't make the same mistakes when you're notebooking. If you're interested in learning more about notebooking, I'd highly recommend joining the Robot Notebooking Discord server, which I'll try and have a link to in the description, but Discord links usually expire, so feel free to DM me for that if you want it. Any questions are welcome, and I hope you guys enjoy and learn lots from this video. Sorry that it ended up being so long, but I kind of had a lot I wanted to say. Also, the link to the engineering notebook, if you want to look at it yourself, will be in the description of this video. To start with, just basic fill in the information in case it's lost it can be found. Nothing really special here. Then, table of contents is where things really start. So, make sure that you fill in your table of contents, page number, what's going on in that page, date that the entry was filled in, and then we did something extra where we did color coding the pages to the steps of the design process to help show the judges that we repeated the design process multiple times throughout, and just to make it very evident that we used the design process. And I'll get more to that on page two. But you can see, going through the design process, and we did it in rainbow color order, just to make it even more obvious that it's a sequence but then starting back over, going through the process multiple times. And we had a lot of table of contents. Um, I think the notebook ended up being around 400 pages by the time we submitted it at Worlds, but this is only the version up until after state. So yeah, then team profile. Honestly, the judges don't care about this at all. You could probably get away with not even having it. And then this is where things, really, really, really important things happen. So this is our engineering design process page. It lists out the six steps of the engineering design process that we used and gives a brief description about what they were. And listing out your design process that you use at the start of the notebook is very, very important. Um, the entire notebook revolves around this one singular page. So definitely make sure that you have something like this in your engineering notebook. Then we move on to the game breakdown and initial analysis. I've seen a lot of notebooks where this is a long, multi-page thing. Honestly, listing out the facts doesn't need to be very long. We have a one-page breakdown of the game. And then we move on to analysis of the game. Um, which this is essentially breaking down how we think the game will be played from a strategic point of view. So we reference things like the autonomous win point being important in tipping point. Uh, we think that all the discs are going to be scored. Uh, rollers are going to be important at the end of the game. And this initial analysis ended up being pretty accurate for the most part. Then we also mentioned quickly expanding at the end of the match would be important, all things that happened. So then we moved on and we listed out some criteria and constraints for the game. And then the game manual came out. And when the game manual came out, that changed a couple things from our initial analysis. So we went back through, we talked about how we read the game manual. We talked about all the things that were different than we originally thought that were only in the game manual but not in the reveal video such as the vertical expansion limit, we talked about that. Then we did an updated design brief. So we had our problem statement, design statement, criteria and constraints. And then we move on to brainstorming. And a design brief is something I'd highly recommend all teams do. It's something real engineers do. And this is definitely a good thing to have, especially if your judges are actual engineers. So then mechanism brainstorming. We broke up our brainstorming into different categories. Um, disc intaking, disc launching, covering tiles, and spinning rollers. So we did four separate brainstorming sessions for each of these. So we list out disc intake, a uh, bunch of different ideas, and then we gave a brief description of like where we've seen something like this before. Like rubber band rollers, uh, those were common in change up and turning point. Um, did those for all those, then disc launching, listed out a bunch of different launcher types, covering tiles, uh, this one was a bit more interesting just because early season no one knew how the best way to cover tiles was, string shooters weren't really a thing yet, and then finally spinning rollers. So that part is really just the more things you list out, the better there. I think we probably could have come up with more and that would have been better. Then we went through and for intakes, we did sketches of each of these. Judges like to see sketches. So we did a sketch very clearly showing what the design was listed some brief descriptions on it, how many motors it would use. Uh, these are pros and cons, we didn't specifically list them out, but just kind of some general things about it. Uh, repeat this process for all the ideas. You could also do this in CAD, 
that would work too. Then we moved on to drive bases, just listed out the common drive base types. We didn't bother doing brainstorming for this because it's pretty much just a list. It's tank drive, mechanum drive, H drive, X drive. You could really add some things like swerve drive if you wanted to be fancy, but we didn't bother doing that. Then decision matrix. Decision matrix is you cannot have enough of in your engineering notebook. Especially all of your important decisions need to have a decision matrix to back them up. There we go. So you can see on a scale of 1 to 5, I would recommend doing 1 to 10. I think we swapped to that part way through the season just because 1 to 5 is a little bit limiting. Then some things like complexity, number of motors needed, margin of error, and reach. This was for the intake section. And then we listed the weighting of each of these, such as motors needed was significantly more important than the complexity of the mechanism to us. So then we'd fill in all these things, tally up their totals, and vertical flap roller was the design that we chose based on this. And we repeated this for launching mechanisms, covering tiles, spinning the rollers, and drive base types. And decision matrices should be used for each different mechanism. You shouldn't just have one for your drive base and then none of your other mechanisms. Then part of the rubric is stating your plan to build. So this covered all the nitty gritty details, things such as RPMs and stuff. We probably could have been a bit more specific as to why we chose the RPMs. But this lists out motor distribution, how we plan on making the robot physically work, because a couple of those things we didn't really touch on, and like how these mechanisms would interact with each other. Uh, we referenced the X drive that I built in ChangeUp, and then that kind of listed out our entire plan for the robot and kind of explained the logic behind it. Probably could have gone into more detail, probably could have done the decision matrices for RPM if we really wanted to, probably would have made the notebook a bit better. Then uh, we moved on to CAD drawings. I'd recommend having CAD drawings in your notebook ex in addition to sketches and before you build, just as one more step to show along the way. And CAD drawings also just make building the robot significantly easier. So I didn't really have much of a description as this was a drive base that I used in ChangeUp. All that I did was add some tracking wheels that didn't work. They were static mounted. And that was my first time doing a render. It sucked, I got better later on. So then, I went through and I did an entry for each different mechanism because I didn't do this all in one go. So I added the roller mechanism to it, showed it on the field, kind of the intake mechanism, kind of talk about the logic, some of the struggles I had. This robot was pretty easy to CAD. Some of the other ones are more complicated, which I'll get to later on. It's just an isometric view. Conveyor and flywheel, isometric view, close up of the flywheel. I talked a little bit about the angle we chose. We chose to do a 543 triangle just to make that easy. That way we didn't have to use any gussets or anything. Probably could have gone into more detail about the why behind the CAD. I think that would have made it a bit better. Talked a bit about custom plastic usage. And then since I didn't do chain in the CAD drawing because chain is a pain to do, I printed out a picture and then sketched on my own chain just to kind of visually show that. Then expansion mechanism, originally we were going to do wheels that would roll it across the field, although we came up with something significantly better later on, just kind of isometric. This is a great way to do pictures, by the way, top, iso, front, side. Then full robot picture, top, iso, front, side, and then just a couple of renders that I did of the robot. This isn't really super needed. Some judges it might catch the eye of, some judges won't really care, but I just find renders fun too. Then there we kind of drew our original plan for expansion and how it would cover every single tile on the field. Uh, this was launched from the center, which we talk about a bit more after Mall of America. So then, now that the CAD is completely done, we go along and we do talk about the building. So the building entries for some of the things were pretty simple just because it was we copied the CAD. And then talk about like this paragraph here is about the changes we had to make because you want to document all the changes you make in between the CAD drawing and the building, because you're going to have them, you're never going to get a perfect CAD, especially things like intakes don't tend to work out very well. So we talked about one of the problems we encountered, how we fixed it, and then isometric picture of the drive base at the end. Now their building entry, kind of explaining, we had a lot of text here, probably could have had more pictures to mix it up of progress along the way, but definitely make sure you have a picture at the end of every entry just to show off what you've done. 
intake and conveyor belt, talked about the challenges we faced that day, how we fixed them, picture at the end, kind of repeat that process over and over. Again, we got better at this later on, but having pictures of the things that didn't work and not just pictures at the end is definitely something I would recommend doing. Flywheel construction, you can kind of see we started that there, showed off some gusset stuff, picture of the bot at the end of practice, again, very similar stuff. Then we kind of went back through the design process here as we defined a new problem of our disks couldn't shoot far enough. Um, and then we brainstormed some ideas. So this was the decision matrix to decide what type of way we'd use to increase our range, like increasing the moment of inertia was the flywheel, what it was what ended up winning the decision matrix. And then we did another brainstorming session for ways to increase the moment of inertia of the flywheel. And then we did another decision matrix to describe which way we were going to use to increase the moment of inertia of the flywheel. So then we went back through, redid the CAD drawing to update, and then physically put those changes on the robot. And we had some 24 tooth gears there to increase the moment of inertia. It kind of worked, but not enough. So then we went back through, we went with our second choice in the design matrix, recatted the robot, built a very large flywheel weight, um, and then it kind of worked made some improvements to the flywheel weight because moment of inertia is mass times radius squared. So having your mass concentrated on the outside means you can get more moment of inertia for less mass. And less mass is always a good thing. So then finish the flywheel. Sketch of our fake Versa hub adapters. There's some close-up pictures of small changes that we made to the robot. And then we did a brief thing about how we tested the robot on the field. Really, we could have used some more data here. These weren't hard numbers. These were more of just general observations. Like, rollers were easy to spin. They catch a bit on the screws. So this definitely could have had some more numbers. Like, we mentioned 45% accuracy there. But testing procedure and then more and more numbers is always a good thing to have. So then we talked about how we used VexForm a bit to discuss flywheel ideas, ways to increase that consistency on the flywheel, um, did some screenshots from the form, different ways to increase that. And then we did an entry about actually building the flywheel consistency. So we kind of showed the problem there in a sketch. The flex wheel was hitting the disc like that, but we wanted it to hit like that, just because that we figured that would give us more consistent contact. So that, and then QR codes, I wouldn't really recommend doing. Judges aren't going to scan them. It's more of just if you want them for yourself to be able to reference back later. And just a general build entry. No picture. Definitely should have had a picture. Picture at the end of practice. Definitely something you could have. Then our main issue here was getting the discs to feed into the flywheel consistency. And that's really just all this entry was about. Then back to the design process. This was after Mall of America. And we decided to start our endgame. We knew that endgame wasn't going the way that we originally thought it was. So we went back through to finding the problem. Should have had a design brief here. Comparing endgame designs. Pros and cons of different ideas. Uh, string launcher. There was our original sketch of our string net. And then referencing a railgun I built my freshman year. Um, that was not at all related to Tower Takeover. So then we talked about building the string launcher. Problems there. Definitely should have taken more pictures along the way. There's the original prototype. And then we talked about attaching the launcher. And I believe the big issue there was it took too much power to fire that launcher. So we redid the design. And then mounted three launchers. It didn't work. So we had to make the changes. And then we came up with the hinge design, which is what we ended up using on the haunted robot. So, robot with the launching system, again, should have had more pictures. You're really going to have a hard time having too much pictures. Um, I would also recommend having lots of text explaining your processes too, as the judges need to be able to follow the logic that you follow. So then we talked about making the string net. Um, this was our original plan, what we ended up changing it to. I think this sketch was a really good idea, just as it kind of shows off um, something you can't easily do with a picture. Then we talked about improving the string launchers. We spent a lot of time tuning the end game, um, a way that we could quickly reload it because one of our problems we were having was end game was taking us 20 minutes to reload, which obviously doesn't work in a real competition setting. Um, then another thing, this was not at all a part of our design process, but we wanted to have this 
as we were dying parts and we wanted to still be able to prove that these were legal parts that had been legally modified. So we documented that in our engineering notebook. We did get asked at inspection a couple of times about the blue flex wheels. Uh, I think that was the only thing that got brought up. But we wanted to just have this as a reference in case anyone wanted to challenge us on the legality of our parts. And then we had a big issue with the strings getting tangled and not being able to untangle them. So we actually bought different colored strings in order to be able to tell them apart. And this thing we didn't really mention as a step of the design process, as it was more of just something we wanted to do to make the robot easier and look cooler. So then, just general tuning. Again, should have had a picture. And that QR code leads to the video that was very, very popular of our eight string shooter. Um, kind of showed up. We had an issue with string getting sucked into the flywheel and breaking a bunch of things. Um, and just kind of shooting, driving, maintenance. Then we had to redo the tracking wheel setup. Again, this is probably a time where we should have gone back through the design process, done a design brief, brainstormed solutions, done a decision matrix, catted it out, and then physically built it. Um, I don't think we did this enough. I think that's the main critique with this notebook is we didn't go back through the design process enough times. So did a sketch to show the solution, how we fixed it. We ended up going to banded trackers on 2.75 inch wheels, and these worked quite well. We ended up doing banded trackers on 2.75 inch wheels, which worked quite well. I like the amount of pictures and sketches on this slide and the text to picture ratio. I think that's very good. Then just a general timeline. Uh, this wasn't the best. We really should have had timelines earlier on in the season, but we just weren't quite sure what tournaments we were going to. But this we kind of had, we knew we were going to the tournament up in Gross Catholic, Nebraska. And then we also had the haunted signature event. Definitely should have started this timeline sooner out in advance. Um, you want every day accounted for in a timeline. I would recommend having a general rough season timeline at the beginning of your engineering notebook before you start doing anything else. And then uh, timelines as you go. Every single day should be covered in a timeline. So then talking about tuning odometry constants, a little bit of code. I'll get more to the code later. The first half of the notebook, the code is really, really bad. I did not do a good job doing that. Um, later in the notebook for the second robot, I did a bit better job, so I'll kind of cover the code stuff there. I wouldn't recommend doing what I did here. Um, this was okay. It kind of described the process of tuning odometry constants, um, but the actual code annotations were not good. So then, autonomous program paths. This is something I've been doing since Tower Takeover. I think it's really handy. You just number the steps and show what your robot's doing on the field. I think it's the best way to show off your Auton. It looks good. Um, it helps plan out the Autons too, because you don't want to just start coding with no idea what you're doing. So then kind of coding. Coding entries probably should have had a lot more test data, as we did call them testing. Like we should have said, hey, this run did this. These were the exact issues with this run, moving on to the next run. And I think that would have just made coding easier. Uh, also what was changed between the next run. So, and this is kind of something we started doing is one entry that spread across multiple days. Uh, I think that worked well as some of these entries just took too long and they were the exact same thing as before. We ended up adding a small guard to the front of the robot because we were getting stuck on disks. Coding right side, again, should have had some testing data here, um, kind of like we had in the driver skills paths, which I'll get to later. Solo autonomous win point program. Very similar stuff, same complaints. And then QR code of the match autonomous. Again, the judges probably aren't going to look at it. It's more for your own reference. Then improving the tracking wheels, we made some slight tracking wheel modifications. Um, I don't remember exactly what they were. You can read the entry if you want to know. Then programming skills path. This is more complicated. These two pages would be next to each other, so you'd be able to see the numbers on the left side, and this would be on the right side. These ones are a bit more convoluted, and this took up like the entire page um, because you don't want it to ever be too messy for the judges to read. Bigger pictures are always going to be better than smaller pictures, especially in the case of physical notebooks that aren't scanned in because I can just zoom in and out on a digital copy, but for a physical copy, I can't do that. And some judges are old and can't see very well. Then coding programming skills. Again, same complaints. Should have had more data. Uh, a small sketch of how... We wanted our roller mech to land on it. Really, really not enough data here. 
Um, this was a small change to the autonomous route that we made. Uh, that should be documented because, of course, you want the judges to be able to follow your entire logic. Again, just not really enough data here. This is kind of what I was talking about. We should have for every single, like every single run, we should have had this and then listed what we were going to change and what we thought about it. So the run number, uh, number of local disks, high disk rollers, estimated endgame, estimated total. And of course we weren't running endgame in every single run because that would have been too much of a pain. Then we talked about adding pneumatics because the GDC made not running an air tank illegal. <sighs> then driver skills path. Again, very similar thing. Paths are good. They look good in the engineering notebook and they help you out with robotics, coming up with your plan. So kind of listed the logic behind the path. That's probably something we could have covered more um, is the logic behind our paths. We just kind of said, hey, this is what we're doing. And a lot of that was just because we were looking and seeing online what other teams had done. But I think we should have gone more into that. And then steps. And practicing driver skills. This is something we did a lot more later on. You'll see that run number, local disk, cycle disk rollers, run time, total. And this is something that's great. That's testing data. And it's also just very satisfying to be able to look back and see your improvement throughout the season. Like 12 high gold disks was what I was getting first. And that number obviously grew a lot throughout the season. Then something broke. We had to fix it. I'm just going to skip over this annotated code. It's bad. The annotated code for the second robot is significantly better. So don't do what I did here. Then driver skills practice. And again, notes for each run is something that we should have had, but just run time, logo, high goal, logo, rollers, total. Lots and lots of data. You can't have too much data in your engineering notebook. Data is always good. Then our first tournament, the tournament results, I think were a little bit bulky at times. Um, but this is essentially our general format. We would say match number, red alliance, blue alliance, total, autonomous win point. Um, they, we won skills, champion, and excellence award. You don't need to talk about your awards much. That's not the point. Um, then we kind of talked about what mistakes we made that match. We did a breakdown of the match. Same thing for all of these. What mistakes we made, how we can improve. Or reasons that we didn't get the autonomous win point or something. Or why we lost. Then... Elimination rounds recap. Um, some people I know talk a lot about picking their alliance partner. I've heard of teams doing decision matrices to pick your alliance partner. I don't think that's something you really need to talk about very much unless you're actually doing it at the tournament and you can just like paste your notes into the notebook. Scrimmage afterwards. Then we listed out all the things that we wanted to do better before Haunted. Um, this is really the reason you should have tournament recaps and analysis because that can show you what changes you need to make it's good as the team to be able to go through think everything watch all your match videos and it's great for the engineering notebook and these all have justification based on the analysis above so then talking about some of the changes we make again should have had more pictures adding another string launcher because we didn't have enough string launchers already new programming skills path Again, probably should have talked more about the logic behind that path um, without just saying that we copied Freedom Gladiators. And coding and new programming skills. Again, these entries weren't great. More detail would have been good. Yeah, not enough test runs. Need more test runs and more information about the test runs. But, yeah, driver skills practice, again, Good number of runs, not enough detail for each and every run. And again, I'd highly, highly, highly recommend doing this. I can't emphasize enough how much just at least logging your driver skills runs and all of your autonomous runs, how important it is, because you can see your improvement throughout the season. Like I was getting 12 high gold discs originally. Now I'm peaking at 18, which I think is about what I got at Haunted. Final preparations for Haunted. Um, then Haunted Tournament Recap. Again, very similar stuff, just kind of the score. Haunted, they were able to show us the details for all the matches at the end, um, explanation. Having the explanation is important because you can reference back to those later, and it kind of points out all your flaws as they happen. Then, brief description of skills. 
combined seventh place globally. So that was fun. Qualified for worlds off that. Then haunted tournament reflection. This was essentially us saying we hate the old robot. Here's everything we want to do differently. It's time to do a rebuild. So I probably would have gone back and still done decision matrices and defined the problem. But I think this kind of worked. It just could have been better. Like we talked about, we knew we needed a six motor drive because we were getting bullied as a four motor drive too much. Um, so we just listed like every single thing we wanted to change. There were a lot of changes. Um, we kind of did a compare and contrast between all the launchers, puncher, catapult, flywheel, probably should have done a decision matrix. Uh, then Gantt charts. Gantt charts are something you should really have in your engineering notebook. So let me zoom in here. Gantt charts are way better than timelines. If you don't know what a Gantt chart is, look it up. You should have these in your engineering notebook. I really like this setup that we had. Uh, we should have done more of these throughout the season, but this was very good. We just didn't know what we were doing after January 7th in terms of tournaments. But Gantt charts, really, really, really important to have. Uh, that's a huge number of the points you can earn on the engineering notebook rubric. So I'm going to go a little bit faster through the second half of the notebook because I'm going to start sounding like a broken record here. A lot of my gripes with the second half are the same as the first half, so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So again, similar, um, pl list the plan, uh, plan, cutting the drive. This was a failure. We did not actually end up having this robot because it the spacing didn't work. Um, you can kind of see the intake and the puncher we built was just too bulky. So we ended up scrapping this, and I think having your failures in there is just as important as having your successes. Um, so then recatting the drive, I kind of skipped over that stuff. I was pulling multiple late nights trying to get this done. That looks pretty similar to the world's bot. Renders, then just building entries. Again, should have had more pictures. A lot of building entries. And this top uh, ISO front side, I'd recommend doing all your pictures in that format. And just having those four pictures right next to each other looks really good. Um, yeah, again, documenting your failures again. This ratchet thing didn't end up working. Um, going back to the problem, we were having issues with getting the chain and RPMs that we needed. Ditching that. Then changing over to a new design. So we kind of went back through, redefined the problem. Should have had design briefs. Should have had decision matrices. Um, Again, way more detail for the um, yellow step of the design process. And just a lot of build entry. Uh, odometry tuning, something good that we did here is we reference back to how we tuned Odom on the first robot because that's a very similar process. And it shows that you're referencing back to the notebook. I think I already mentioned that was something good that you should be doing. And this was not good. I listed out all my cool functions that I had, but I didn't actually go in depth into them. I do that a bit later on in the notebook, though, so I'll stop there and cover that. Autom paths, similar as before. Uh, some testing results. We really should have had more test results here. Um, it was about the disks, how they loaded into the slingshot. Um, more testing. This was this was good. It just needed more. Then yeah, tournament reflection, same stuff as before. And then we have tournament re re reflections here where we list out the thing main changes that we want to change with the robot. Um, yeah, another autom path. More skills data, another tournament reflection. Um, a timeline here, and again, I, we should have done Gantt charts. Um, but this timeline just didn't have a lot of detail. We weren't quite sure what we were doing, but I think a Gantt chart definitely would have been better than just this. This wasn't detailed enough as it should have been. And then here's some really interesting stuff is we were having issues with the slingshot, with the rubber band stretching out, losing tension, not shooting consistently. So we actually used a spring scale and we measured the amount of force that would happen on the rubber bands as we stretched them out certain lengths. Um, and this is something that we grew into throughout the season, and we referenced a lot during our interview, and I think that helped a lot secure the testing data points. So yeah, you can see here, we're stretching out the rubber bands back and forth, back and forth, and we're measuring the number of newtons, and it kind of settled at around 4.8 newtons, 
and then sometime later on it started to decay the bands. Um, so this was something really useful because we knew if the rubber bands were 4.8 newtons they were good to go and we would have a spring scale with us we would test the rubber bands before matches and then if they weren't 4.8 newtons if they were reading say 4.6 then we'd swap them out we would stretch them out 20 times in order to break them in get them down to 4.8 newtons and then put them on the robot and that was something that worked very well it completely solved our consistency problems it was probably a bit extra in terms of practicality but in terms of documenting in the engineering notebook i think that was a great thing to have in the notebook and an excellent thing to bring up in the interview lots of tournaments in january and february so yeah this is pretty repetitive um just going through the steps, going through the motions, and you do need to make sure that you document everything. You can't just skip over stuff because the design process needs to completely cover everything, and part of your points are that it's a complete thing on the rubric. Judges will not like it if you show up with a robot that does not match with your engineering notebook. Okay, there we go. Um, fully annotated code. So this is the way I did it. I think this was pretty decent um probably could have been better but this ended up working pretty well so i would print out my code um light mode code the only time that you should ever use light mode for coding um and i made sure i had lots of comments in my code describing what the program did and then off to the side here i would kind of do some curly brackets and describe in words what this section of the code is doing so like that listed all the pneumatics um this defines all the motor state, what they are, and what color they are, and their orientation. So this is this is code. It's still commented. You want to make sure your code is commented. But then this is more of a human readable explanation for judges with less coding experience. Um, so this worked pretty well, I think. Could have probably been a little bit neater, uh, spacing wise, but we didn't want this to take up a ton of space, and we still want enough room to write on the right hand side. So I think this was pretty decent. You can kind of see. Just curly bracket describing the section of code. Code is still commented. I'll kind of scroll through that a little bit more. I think the full annotated code took up around 30 pages. Um, so yeah, I'll just kind of scroll through that a bit quicker. And then, yeah, tournament results, pretty basic stuff, goofy pneumatic roller mechanism, um, and I think that pretty much wraps up everything for the engineering notebook, because it's all just repeating the same stuff, driver skills practice, new skills route, and we added colors here just because of how chaotic it was, which I think is a good thing. Colors in your notebook should be used minimally and only with a specific purpose in mind. Uh, but this this worked well. Lots of tournament reflections. We had a pre-state timeline. Uh, this was just kind of a last minute, here's what we need to do every day. I think this was decent because it was only for one week. Um, again, we probably could have done this and a Gantt chart. You can't have too many Gantt charts. Um, Lots of skills grinding the week before state, then state tournament results, and then state tournament reflection, and that wraps up the engineering notebook.